I forgot to mention in the video that I paid full price. I think they tried to give me a discount code. I had like a coupon and I wasn't able to use it. So I, but I'm glad if I did pay full price because I was like, I want to talk crap about your scope. And if you send me one for free, I won't do as good a job. So I used my money for the dialed archery Arxos and I wanted to clear that up on the front end and I didn't mention it in the video. So this is me editing the video, doing a punch in right at the beginning of the video, like a professional. Yeah, dialed archery customer service, please. Yeah, I have some questions. So I bought a premium dialed archery Arxos uh, scope for my bow, and I cannot get the windage to lock. I have literally bent two Allen wrenches on that little Allen screw that is in the, uh, the that's on the black knob there. That's not the lock. Okay, it's underneath that. Perfect, okay, I will, uh, I will turn the scope over and I will look at that. So follow up question, because it's a premium scope and I am, uh, I'm, I'm moderately annoyed that I can't adjust the third axis uh, using micro adjustments. The turtle, the turtle needs to come out of the shell. This feels like a weird thing that you're saying and making fun of me. Take the windage knob and spin it all the way so that the turtle comes out of the shell and I will see two screws where I can, I see, I see. Yes, no, everyone's gonna know this is fake because my phone keeps turning on and I could have just turned it off, but I'm not going to. But I know for a fact that I wasn't the only one who didn't read the instructions. I'm out of focus there because I was focusing on the bow. I know I'm not the only one. I know that there's people out there who did it and I want to dispel some myths and I want to talk about the new dialed archery Arxos. When I say dispel some myths, what I mean is uh, answer some questions that I may have perhaps had when I opened the box right off the bat that I haven't seen people talking about. Because obviously you can go watch any number of reviews that they can tell you kind of what all the things are here. And I will explain what those are, but I wanted to start the video by talking about some of the things that I thought were weird that made me not like this when I opened up the box. Everything seemed loose, like not crazy loose, but there was, there was a lack of tension in the wheel to the point where even with the brake on, I could, I could just basically push down on this rail and get the entire housing to move, which obviously is, to me was like, oh, this is not gonna be reliable. I can't use this hunting. This isn't going to work. I'm always going to be worried that it's not where I thought it was supposed to be. Turns out, you can take these two little baby nails right here, which is what I'm going to call all the little micro Allen screws that they put in here, these little baby nails. You can hunker those down just a little bit more to create a little more tension. You can also do the same here. You back out a little baby nail on the, this dial and then you can actually tighten this up a little bit more. You can get it so tight that it won't move. So the range of adjustability as far as the amount of tension that the, that the scope can, uh, can achieve was a pleasant surprise. The next thing that I didn't notice because I'm dumb and I didn't read the packaging was I kind of thought maybe this was how you adjusted the windage or locked it, which seemed weird. So I did put my tool in there and while I was joking in the beginning, I didn't actually bend two Allen wrenches. I may have given that a decent little try before I realized another baby nail on the bottom is what you're going to do to actually lock your windage. So like normal, you would loosen it up, you would adjust the windage to where you want it, then you would lock it back down. That was kind of a dumb thing of me. The next one was the third axis. In order to actually get to the micro adjust on the third axis, you run this all the way out and it exposes the actual micro adjust here. It's not just this bright silver baby nail. This is getting stupid. You run that out and then you've got the ability to actually micro adjust the third axis. Now, one thing that's a little disappointing is you can't micro adjust the second axis. And these two screws are actually going to become more important because they don't just adjust the second axis. 
More on that to come in the future. I don't think it's a deal breaker. I maybe wish they could figure that part out, but not a deal breaker for me. You may be asking yourself right about now, is he going to continue moving around his house so that he is going to clean his house as he goes before he shows us all the rooms of his house? I hope so. The next thing that I was a little disappointed in was this break, as they call it. Evidently, this is not designed as a hard stop. This is not designed to be something that you can't override. In fact, it is designed to be overridden in the case of necessity. They don't want you to break something within the scope. So what I did was adjust mine to the point where I felt comfortable, like walking around every day banging this on things was it was gonna take some pressure to actually get this thing to move. And as of right now, I'm pretty happy with the tension that I've got on it, unbraked versus braked. Now, we'll see if it lasts. Time will tell. This is like my little editing station slash storage. I have to paint that uh, access. Still, don't pay no attention to that. But I think some people are probably gonna be like, man, these pin gaps are way too big. So this is a single pin site if you order the original mag. Green pin up top, red pin way down at the bottom. And what that bottom pin was intended for is basically bonus pin. Now they've come out with a, with a different mag, a different insert that fits in here that you can buy that has three pins. So if you want a multi-pin sight, just do that right off. Think of this one, the original, as a one pin sight with a little bonus. So if I was gonna go to tack, I would basically figure out where the transition was where I was going to then switch to that red pin because I got out to 105 yards just with the center pin, no problem. I'm confused about this shot as well. So we built this place as a studio to start. So we're gonna put a wall up. I just haven't gotten to it because I have excuses. Bedroom, you walk through this part, kitchen, and then the front room, which you will see momentarily. I'm sure my wife is going to be thrilled that I'm showing our bedroom with no art on the walls or anything like that. Here's the magic of this scope. I'm gonna talk about some of the other things that I like about it, but what's the most obvious thing about this when you see it? This rail that is not vertical. So the intention is basically that at 20 yards, this thing is run up so it's out away from the bow, which provides one sight picture inside the peep. And then as you bring it down, it's getting closer to the bow, which is actually giving you more distance. So what we've got here is a very rough demonstration. Your peep is located on the left-hand side. We've got a closer scope housing in the middle and then a further away scope housing on the right-hand side. If you notice the angle of the lines, the scope that's further away would have to have its 50 pin dropped way down in order to actually intersect the line versus the closer scope. The advantage of a scope being further away tends to be accuracy, kind of like a rifle. The advantage of it being closer is essentially you can shoot farther without hitting the veins on your scope housing. The dialed archery scope basically allows you to do both things in one scope. Personally, why this was such a big deal to me when I saw this. For whatever reason, when I dial a scope in, 20 yards always feels kind of squinchy. Like my anchor feels a little bit tight to where the peep is and by the time I back out where I'm shooting 100, 120 yards, I feel like I'm actually either adjusting my anchor by pulling it back or I'm opening my jaw a little bit. That was an example of me opening my jaw for some reason. In order to keep light from appearing from around the outside of the housing. So basically what's happening as this thing as a traditional site is going down, I'm getting more light around the housing because of the angle. And I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, maybe I'm not the only one, but that's what I've noticed. And when I was shooting this out to 100, I don't get that. So that makes me so freaking excited because of the confidence that I can have in the sight picture the entire way down the bow. It's at this point in the evening that I'm pretty sure my wife is going to come in and be like, what are you doing? How are you showing everybody our house before it's done? I just wanted like a sneak peek. Just wait till I go downstairs and go outside. That's the part that's gonna blow your mind because she did such an awesome job of turning this barn, by the way, that's what we're in right now, a barn, into a freaking badass house. 
So one of the things that kind of separates this site from some of the other ones, this dial right here, you can actually reverse. So you can pop this out and you can put it on the other side, which means that you can take your sight tape from being outside on the right hand side of the actual unit to the inside. When I talked to one of the owners, he said that 85% of people are ordering theirs on the inside. And I didn't quite understand because I was like, it's so much easier for me, the way I hold my bow to just check everything from the right hand side. I don't know why, it just is. So I switched mine to the outside and then I put a quiver on and I realized, oh, that may be one of the best reasons for keeping the dial on the inside. One other argument for actually leaving the sight tape on the inside is the needles, the indicator needles, do not move to the outside. So they ship this with four different indicator needles that you can kind of move around. But because I moved mine to the outside, all I have is the line that's kind of notched into the actual, uh, into the actual metal on the scope. So I'm probably going to shift mine back in because of the quiver issue. But the other cool part is, it's not that difficult for me to basically rig up multiple sight tapes for multiple different arrow configurations because you can buy these little white plastic pieces right here, which are, the, which are basically what the sight tape mounts to. So all I would do is unscrew a screw, back this out, swap the new one on, pop it back in. I mean, it's not something that you're gonna wanna like do every day, but if you shoot a light arrow, a medium arrow, and a heavy arrow, it's, it's kinda handy. You're so curious all the other times, and now I'm here and you're like, I don't care. I don't want to perform for the camera. Listen, if you've made it this far into the video, I feel like you and me are probably in a relationship and you should probably like and subscribe. Hey, don't bite the metal. He bites the metal. What kind of idiot bites the metal? There's wood everywhere down here. Like and subscribe, don't forget. What you're gonna wanna do is break that top screw loose just a little bit to, cr to keep some tension there and then break the bottom one loose a little bit more and that will allow you to kind of pivot the sight back and forth. And again, I hopefully I cut in and did a thing so that you could see easier. But that will basically allow you to pivot, to pivot the windage rail back and forth to get your actual second axis in. Is this the best case scenario for this? I don't think so. I think if they can figure out some way to make that a micro adjust, just because again, for the, the price, it's, it's an expensive sight. I think when you're just thinking about competing with uh, like the other bow sight companies that are in this price range, for that not to be adjustable via micro adjust, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not, not my favorite. This is the master bedroom. Just kidding. This is where we store the saddles. Oh, it's by far the nicest room in the house, like not even remotely close to an argument. But I wanna do the rest of the video in here because legitimately like the softest leather chair on the planet. There's another one under the cat, but that's why Jocelyn keeps the cover on the chair because this has become kind of the cat chair right here. I'm just holding this light on my face, by the way, so if it looks weird because my arm's extended, I don't care. I didn't want to lug the big overhead light all the way down here. Let's talk about a couple of things I don't really like about the scope. The first is probably the indicator pins. They don't touch the tape. So to me, when you're checking for reference, like if, you're, if the bow is lower, it's going to, the angle of you basically looking down on the indicator pin because it's standing off the tape is going to look different than if you're like holding the bow up in front of you. So if you're, I, I, I don't know, I've never been a fan of that. Spot Hog does the same exact thing where, where everything's just off a little bit. Now in a hunting scenario, is it that big a deal? No, it's not because it's maybe a, a yard or two. But when you're doing something like total archery challenge for score, or you're doing something like a, a 3D shoot, it becomes a little bit more important because a yard or two. Now, again, are you gonna get to used to the way you do this? Yes, but I still don't quite understand why they can't be kind of touching the tape. The slide hood 
thing for the for the actual fibers to basically take light out or put light in. I'm not a huge fan of those either because black gold does such a fantastic job with that little basically purple sunglass type thing. And I never really, I, I kind of just take it for granted because I've been shooting the black gold for the last three or four years. That purple shield thing for the sun basically that in the morning is perfectly clear. So when it's kind of darker outside, it's allowing maximum light in. And then in the middle of the day, that sucker is dark purple. Shielding those fibers from light is such a cool piece of tech. I would love it if Dialed would try to figure out something like that so that you weren't adjusting the shield. Another thing that I don't love is the single pin scope. The fact that the new mag they came out with is still one vertical post, but now it has three fibers instead of that huge gap between the two. 100% wish that I would have gone with the three fiber mag rather than just the two. It just makes so much sense. And because it's not adding a bunch of horizontal hard pins that are sticking out that, that uh, clutter up that field of view, it, yeah, it's just the way to go rather than buying the single pin in my opinion. So these were some of my first opinions based on having the dialed and shooting it for a couple of weeks. As things develop and change, I'll probably jump on Instagram, which you should follow me below for some updates. If I, if I hear any other issues that people are having consistently, I'll, I'll post. But overall, first impressions of the dialed archery scope were not awesome, but actually got better as I learned more about the scope. It's probably the perfect total archery challenge site. And I'm super excited about having a site that I can keep separately dialed with separate tapes for my actual attack setup with the arrows that I want to use. Super excited about that. Thanks for watching. I'm Brandon McDonald.